And we're getting to the casualties. And this is the fourth type of lesion that you can you can have, you can choose in Nakisa. It is really meant for a sudden, unexpected, or unusual loss or damage to the lease asset that will uh, will imply the retirement of the asset. So you you cannot use it anymore. Something happened. There was like a, like an accident or something else that that really de, uh, devalued your asset to the point that you have no other choice but to retire it. And with that in mind, so the you have this unexpected event, and that will lead you to uh, to trigger to create a casualty event in Nakisa. Uh, you will see that the flow is different from what we've seen before from the other term. I'm sure in a lot of situations, I'm not telling you anything new here. It's more just to uh, just to have the things in the right order to make you more aware of the workflow. And once you perform the, the casualty, you will need to have uh, to post some um, some of the remaining transactions and afterwards you will be able to uh, to close it. Of course, here, as you have this unexpected event, you don't have a way of selecting those contracts in Nakisa. So uh, because there's nothing special about them, there's a. Uh, there's no particular term or there's no uh, likelihood of ending for those contracts. So you need to to um, to choose them uh, either from a particular company or probably have some details. Uh, either you have the asset number or maybe the company. So you will have to uh, to drill down within the uh, business objects that uh, you have set up in Akisa in order to find the contracts that will be targeted for uh, for a casualty event. So in uh, the event of a casualty, of course, the uh, the idea is that you will have all the periodic postings uh, made up to, to the current period, that is the open period. Was there a question or some background noise? It's okay, moving on. Yeah, no, no, no questions, Kata. Okay, thank you so much. So for the casualty, the likelihood of this event will happen in, in a period you have no control over it, but you have no choice of applying it. So uh, then you will go to your open period in this uh, in this case that I'm showing right here, a test case that I made. We have a casualty to be performed in January 2023. So as you can see, all the postings are made up to the end of December 2022, and then you will be able to apply the casualty. You get this little note in yellow on the top of the window saying that the action will be performed for all units in the activation group. As you know, as you are targeting a specific unit, a specific asset, you can do the split before getting into the casualty. So you will enter the payment date, which will be your effective date. So pretty much the date of, of your open period, the current period that you intend to have the casualty applied on. And the system is going to automatically bring up the main casualty amount. So what you're seeing now on the screen, the casualty amount are in fact the remaining unpaid interest at the time. So this is the minimum that the system will allow you to enter. However, if you have additional payments to, to made in relation to your casualty, like if you have a statement from your insurance company or something else, you can, you can add to this amount to the unpaid interest. You can add the amount that you want to, uh, to recognize. And once you do that, you will have your casualty. We will go through that in a, in a couple of minutes uh, and we will see the demo live. Once you do that, once you apply the casualty, you will see the activation group status will change directly to, uh, to list end. So this is very different from all the other cases that we've seen where you have this two steps closing where you perform the list end, you perform the closing now with the uh, with a casualty, once you perform the casualty, the activation group goes directly into Lisan. And this is the status that late uh, status that later on you can track into your activation group. But now, with the casualty, 
And of course, with, during uh, the casualty and uh, completing the casualty will result in the asset retirement. And you can see here in this case, because the expectation is that you do have some depreciation left. So your accumulating depreciation doesn't equal the value of your gross book value. You will have some gain and loss to recognize. Of course, it is uh, it is a loss here as the asset is not completely depreciated. So casualty is the only event that that triggers such an entry. And I know we talked about this uh, last time and I uh, I had some of you sending me emails, those situation where you can see an amount calculated for the group currency or for something else. There uh, just the system tries to settle some remaining um, amounts that you have there and it is uh, probably related to some other issues that they are. But the only event that should trigger a gain and loss uh, at the asset retirement, it is the casualty. So all the other events that uh, that we've seen, all the other type of list, and you should not have this. All right. And once you have the asset retirement, so the uh, activation group goes into list and status, you will probably have some entries to post. In this example, I have some payment and accruals. Keep in mind, asset depreciation for sure, you will not have, depending also on your integration, perhaps asset depreciation is not of your concern at all. But between the payment and accrual, one of these two, you probably have at least uh, at least one to post depending on the payment frequency. And once we do, you do that, you will be able to perform the close. And now we are going to go into the application and look at the casualty. I hope that everybody is still seeing my screen. Yes. I moved to the application. Thank you so much. And I have here a case already prepared. As you can see, the activation group status is active. My list hand is not available. And I just want to show you in the postings that I have already accounted for the periodic transaction up to uh, up to the current period. So my open period is April 2023. And as I intend to have the casualty in this period, but let's say I received the notice from uh, from some other department, there was an accident, I need to perform the casualty, I need to retire this asset. And I do have double reporting here, and I have posting base for both of the standards that I'm reporting into for this contract for this company. But I just wanted to show you that my open period is April. So I'm coming back to my contract. The activation group is an event that is uh, started at the activation group level. So from the main menu, I will click on casualty here. I will choose casualty. And I have this little window when once again, the note about uh, the action will be performed on all the units. In this case, I have one asset uh, that uh, is within the unit that uh, relates to the activation group. So I don't need to do any split. But if you have more than one units in your uh, unit in your activation group, you can perform the split beforehand. Now my payment date, uh, I can choose it from here and as you can see and I cannot go back to the previous month because I posted all my entries so I am uh, I have only April to be posted I can go in the future in this particular instance and I can do that because I haven't blocked I haven't set up the the system controls however once I do that and I, I have my draft and I want to send to assessment, I will get another error message. The system is going to tell me that I have some unposted uh, depreciation for the particular asset and I need to go back and post it. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and choose my April as I know that I have posted everything up to April. So my first payment date that it's going to also be my effective date is 1st of April. 
I do have the choice of modifying the contract rate. I have it here. I can do that if it's per uh, per the policy for inter uh, based on the internal procedure. I, I don't want to do that for this particular example, but keep in mind you have the options. And for contract that have the IBR, as you know, you will get uh, the message when you send to assessment. Now we have here the main casualty amount and we have two fields because I have uh, dual reporting for this particular contract. Depending on your situation, if you only report under one standard, you are only going to see one field. If you have more than two, you are going to see as many fields as standards you have. Of course, I can enter a description here. I can put something. Uh, this is something for tracking purposes if I need to. And as I was saying, I cannot modify the amount here to be lower than uh, than the 26. If I do that and I click submit, I will get an error message. The system is going to tell me that I absolutely have to have at least 2618 because this is my um, paid amount. However, I can put more than the 26. I can go ahead and put something like 36. The system will allow me. This will be, as I was mentioning, if you ever have some, some different payable amount related to your casualty. And as I'm clicking submit here, like any other event in Nakisa, the system is going to prepare a draft for me to work into so I can check uh, what is the system adding to this contract. I can check the schedules. I can go through the through the flow. So as you can see, I have a nice purple additional tab and I can see I'm in the draft version and I'm still at the activation group level. And if I click on terms and condition, I'm going to see my casualty term that the system added by itself. I have it here. The amount is the unpaid interest that, uh, that it was calculated at the beginning. So now I want to see what's going on with the schedules. Yes. Was there a question? No, no, Kata, no. Oh, I'm sorry. OK. All right, I was clicking on send to assessment and as you can see, the effective date is grayed out, so I, I cannot I cannot change it uh, at this point. If ever you need to, uh, you can delete the draft and, and start the process all over again. And I can choose my posting date and the document date. This is really at user's discretion and I can click submit so I can have the system calculate the schedules and from the main menu, I can go to view schedules to see what is going on with my contract. I'm selecting all the years and I'm selecting all the columns because I want to see what's going on, what is happening. So I have the schedules that are generated successfully. I'm really interested in seeing the last row where the casualty has happened. You see, I have one day here, but this is just for calculation purposes. I have my last payment at 26, the, the remaining unpaid lease. As I'm scrolling to my right, I can see that the 26 is coming from the unpaid interest expense. So my, uh, my accrued interest that I'm going to settle at this line. And I really want to know what is happening to the liability and uh, to the gross book value. So the liability is completely put to zero. Whatever remaining liability is this zero is going to be settled. So I have the delta here on the liability side. And then on the asset, we're reversing the gross book value. And we can also see the reversing of the accumulated depreciation in such a way that my net book value at the end on this line where I'm applying the casualty is zero. I'm happy with uh, with the way schedules have turned out. You can always check the other standard as well. It's going to be similar. So we can go ahead and approve the draft. And now we're going to the uh, to the workflow. And at this point, like with any other draft, I'm completing the remeasurement and I will be able to see the resulting entries. And also the change in status. As you remember, as I told you with the casualty, you will see that the activation group goes directly to Lisan. So this is this is different from all the other cases that we've been through. 
So now we can check really quickly the resulting entries. We have the adjustments both for the liability and we also have the asset retirement. And on the asset retirement, as I was mentioning, and you can see once again, you already have the retirement of the asset here at this stage. This is very different from the other type of cases that we've seen where the asset retirement happens with a closed step, not, uh, not before. But this is really what we call an asset-driven event. We start everything from the asset side and then we're moving on to clearing all the other balances. So here is on the liability, pretty much we put the liability uh, to zero. And uh, as you've seen before, the asset retirement with a PNL impact, a loss in this case. So now I want to move on to the close, but as you can see, my close button is not yet enabled. So this is because I probably have some postings left. I'm going to go really quickly to finish up this. It's going to take me a few seconds. As you can see, there's no depreciation left. That's normal. I retire my asset, but I do have some uh, payment and accrual. And let me book this really quickly. I do have two standards, so I have to be extra quickly. I did it for the first standard. And I can move to my second one to finish this one. So I have my payment here. And I also have my accrual. That's it. And I posted the accrual as well. Everything is posted right now. So I can close the posting here. I can give a quick refresh and you can see I have the close button that is enabled. So at this point, I can go ahead and click on closing. I won't be able to uh, to go beyond the 17th, the date of today. So I can choose either the 1st of April. That's OK. This is the date that we use for the casualty. As you can see, and as you remember from the other type of listen, at this stage, the system is pretty much looking for any remaining balances on the liability as we have here. The, long term, the short term and the accrued interest. If ever there's something remaining with some rounding that we need to settle, we will be doing this at this step. So everything is up to zero. I can click submit. And at this step, I have closed my uh, my activation group in. And also because it's one activation group in the contract, the contract is closed itself as well. As you know, if you have several activation group, the contract will not be closed. You will only have that for the activation group. 